Locate the demonstration table frame and display boards inside the trailer. During transport they are held in place by rubber bungee cords. Clevis pins are used to secure the legs of the trailer to the frame. To extend the legs of the table frame, remove the lowest clevis pin, extend the leg, and replace the clevis pin through the leg. Replace the cotter pin into the clevis pin hole. Once assembled, ensure the table is placed on level ground. The table is designed to support a large amount of weight, but will fail on unlevel ground. Locate the sprinkler motor and extension pipe. Insert the lower end of the extension pipe through the eye bolt and hand tighten the knob. The pipe should extend no more than 6 inches below the eye bolt. The backboard is used to secure the sprinkler pipe to the table and to display particle detachment during the demonstration. Do not operate the sprinkler without attaching the backboard. To attach the backboard, align the grooves on the bottom of the board with the aluminum frame fittings on the table frame and slide the board onto the frame. Secure the sprinkler pipe to the backboard using the PVC snap clamp. Locate the light duty water hose from inside the trailer and place near or underneath the table. Attach the hose to pipe adapter to the sprinkler pipe then attach the light duty water hose to the other end of the adapter. Locate the heavy duty water hose from inside the trailer and connect it to the main water supply line hose or water faucet. Attach the light duty water hose to the heavy duty water hose. The connection should not be too far from the demonstration table in case the water needs to be shut off immediately. A water pressure reducer valve with attached hose connector with cutoff switch is used to connect the two hoses. The reducer valve has a regulator to adjust the water pressure of the sprinkler unit. The light duty hose should connect to the reducer and the heavy duty hose should connect to the hose connector. Ensure the cutoff switch is in the off position prior to turning the water supply on. Locate the sprinkler motor power supply box inside the trailer. This box includes the sprinkler power supply cable along with several attachment options. There are several options for supplying power to the unit. A direct connect to an automotive battery. The clips are used to connect the battery to the terminals. A four prong connection attachment and an AC outlet plug attachment. If utilizing the four prong adapter, use the outlet located at the front of the trailer. This adapter is also useful when supplying power to the water pump inside the trailer. If utilizing the AC outlet connector, connect the plug to a standard 110 outlet, preferably a GFCI outlet. Once a power supply adapter is selected, connect the adapter to the sprinkler motor power supply cable. Ensure the switch is set to the off position prior to connecting the electricity. An indention is present to dictate the on position. Connect the power supply cable to the sprinkler motor. Secure the connecting cord by wrapping the cord around the eye bolt knob. To be consistent in presenting this demonstration, the water pressure and distribution should be calibrated. To 
calibrate the water pressure and distribution, set the power cable switch to the on position, and open the water cutoff switch on the hose connector. The desired water pressure to achieve raindrop terminal velocity is between 6 and 8 psi. Use the pressure reducer valve to adjust the water pressure. The water pressure is displayed on the pressure gauge. Check to ensure the water reaches the edge of the table frame. Water may reach past the frame. The water path should be in line with the direction of the table frame. This ensures that the entire table surface is receiving water. T-rods are used to set the slope angle for the demonstration pans. This is important when demonstrating runoff and infiltration on higher sloping areas. Each ring represents a different slope break. The first ring represents a 0 to 1% slope. The second ring represents 1 to 3%, then 3 to 5, 5 to 8, 8 to 12, and 12 to 15. These are consistent with common soil map unit slope breaks. Loosen the eye bolt that holds the T-rod. Adjust the rod to the desired slope break ring, then tighten the knob. If the slope is not a factor in the demonstration, we recommend using the 1 to 3% slope rings by default. Remove the demonstration pan from the trailer by removing the cotter pin on the securing rod to lower the rod. The entire demonstration pan assembly includes the demonstration soil pan, the infiltration tray, the runoff bottle hanger, the runoff funnel, and a plexiglass splash cover. Install the bottle hanger to the post on the edge of the table. The infiltration tray sits centered on the T-rod and bottle hanger. The hook on the bottom of the infiltration tray should be facing the front of the table. Locate the infiltration and runoff bottles from inside the trailer. Remove the lids before attaching them to the table. runoff bottle should hang from the front groove of the bottle hangers. The infiltration bottles include an aluminum hook that is attached to the bottle handle. This hook is used to hang the bottle from the bottom of the infiltration tray. The runoff bottles do not have any additional hook on the handle. Continue to attach the remaining bottles to the trailer. Before placing demonstration pans on the table, make final adjustments to T-rods, knobs, and infiltration trays. Once the table is assembled and the sprinkler is calibrated, begin placing the demonstration pans onto the infiltration trays. When organizing demonstration pans, place the most resistant samples towards the outside of the table and the least resistant samples should be at the center of the table. These are more vulnerable to erosion and runoff. When placing the pans onto the trays, a common mistake is to try to fit the pan inside the infiltration tray. The demonstration pan should be centered at the top of the tray. Continue placing the pans onto the table. If necessary, remove any debris that may fall between the bottom of the pan and the infiltration tray. Any remaining debris may cause artificial results in infiltration. In this example, we are using two conventional tillage pans, 
one with 80% residue cover and one with bare ground management system. In using residue or litter, be sure to match the land use with the residue kind. For example, avoid using perennial grass residue to cover tilled cropland, or avoid using corn stalks when demonstrating bare ground in forest clear cutting scenarios. For this demonstration, we are using corn stalk residue for a cropland field. Continue to place the most resistant samples towards the outside of the table. After the pans are set, install the runoff funnel and splash cover for the pans. A groove at the bottom of the runoff funnel fits on the lip of the demonstration pan, securing the funnel to the pan. Also, ensure the plastic wings of the funnel are pressed into the soil material. By inserting the wings into the soil, you ensure that all the soil runoff material is caught and not lost outside of the runoff funnel. The splash covers include plastic guides that sit inside the runoff funnel. In this demonstration, we are using a loblolly pine forest floor, a bahia grass monoculture pasture, a conventional tilled soybean field without residue and with approximately 80% residue, and a no-till field with a recently terminated warm season cover crop mix. The final installation is to attach the front panel to the front of the table frame. Insert the eye bolt into the clevis pinhole on the front of the table. Secure the bolt with a wing nut on the back of the frame. The rainfall simulator is now ready for demonstration. Remove the empty demonstration pans and runoff and infiltration bottles from the table. Using the provided water hose spray nozzle, start spraying the infiltration pans, back panel, and table frame. The objective is to let these components air dry while the other accessories are cleaned. Next, rinse the demonstration pans. When completed, set them up to dry. Remove the infiltration pans and backboard from the table as well. Unhook and disconnect the sprinkler motor mechanism from the table. The table is now available for use as a drying rack if any other space is unavailable. Using the water hose or excess runoff water, rinse the runoff bottles and hang them from the T-rods and hanger posts located along the side of the table frame. Allow them to air dry or wipe them down with paper towels. Continue to rinse the runoff funnels and bottle hangers with water and air dry or use a paper towel. Special care should be used when handling plexiglass splash covers to avoid scratching or other damaging. Each rainfall simulator trailer is equipped with a 60 gallon water tank and pump when water is not accessible at the demonstration site. The water pump requires power to pump water to the simulator sprinkler. This is enough water to run the rainfall simulator twice. Unscrew the lid and fill the tank with water. Ensure the lid is tightened prior to transporting the trailer. Attach the heavy-duty water hose to the faucet coming off the water pump. 
Plug the power cord into the outlet closest to the water pump. To power the motor, switch both rotary switches towards the water tank. Water is now available to run the rainfall simulator. When you are ready to supply water, turn the ball valve handle parallel with the water line. The purpose of the water containment system is to allow for indoor rainfall simulator demonstrations. The system is made up of interconnecting PVC pipe and plastic sheeting or tarp. The demonstration table should be facing the open side of the containment area. Each PVC pipe is numbered with corresponding connecting pieces that aid in assembly. Once the system is assembled, cover the floors and wall with the plastic sheeting or tarp. When placing the rainfall simulator table in the containment area, use the lids from the runoff bottles to protect the sheeting from the aluminum legs of the table. Following the demonstration, use the shop vac to vacuum the excess water from inside the containment area. Do not set the shop vac inside the containment area while in use as there is a high risk of electrocution and injury.